our sort of overarching theme here is that we're promoting um, conservation of birds of prey in a variety of ways, but with a heavy emphasis on student involvement. And uh, the three areas that we have undertaken are rehabilitation, uh, we do a lot of public education, and then um, we have tried to do some captive breeding of uh, targeted species, indigenous local raptors, and release those young birds out back into the wild. And out of that has uh, sort of grown a program which over the past several years has um, sort of grown to have an undergraduate extracurricular emphasis, although we do have a formal classroom instruction and how to care for and manage birds of prey and so forth. And uh, we've gone through a couple of different moves as uh, facilities have been uh, not no longer available or needing in need of repair or what have you. And so uh, in the past five years or so, we've been located here on the, uh, I guess this would be the east end of the poultry science complex in some uh, buildings, one of which we have modified uh, for raptors and one which was built specifically for yeah, raptors. Um, the Bondareff ra Raptor Facility, named for uh, Esther Bondareff, who was a, an alum of Cornell and has taken a vested interest in what we do here. Well, most of these birds are what we would refer to as our education birds. Uh, they're not birds that are rehabilitation cases any longer, um, and they're not breeding birds. They're birds that we have acquired in one way or another that are non-releasable and representative of a species or uh, uh, some bird of interest to us and we use those to uh, do our public education. We always have live birds to exhibit at those programs and also to work with students and give them the opportunity to learn how to work with them, handle them and so forth, uh, do the routine care over a long period of time which includes manicuring their beaks and talons and things like that. So that's what this group of birds are. They sort of self-identified because they're fairly calm, uh, tolerant of being worked with and handled. And so therefore they're uh, easier for the novice to kind of learn from. Remember to give her some slack. Yeah. All right, make sure her wing's not gonna be hitting that leash. And then we'll take it out of the other way. For your first time getting a bird, is that your first time? Or? Well, this is a, uh, a male Harris's hawk. Uh, this is one of the few non-indigenous species that we have. Uh, this is a, probably a second or third generation captive bred bird. It's about 24 years old and was originally used in the sport of falconry. Uh, and we retired from that at probably about age 10 or 12 and then was used in a captive breeding project himself uh, for a few years. And then as he got a little bit older, was donated to our program for educational purposes. So we've had this bird, I would have to look and see, but probably at least a dozen or more years. Um, as is the nature of most Harris hawks, which is a fairly social and gregarious species, uh, he by nature is fairly calm and very tolerant of people, actually he sort of welcomes um, uh, being around people and so he lends himself very nicely to using for educating people about general characteristics of raptors and something about a species that's not necessarily a local bird. My greatest interest is actually in the, uh, the captive breeding where we have tried to focus on the North American occipiters which in New York as you may know are a species of special concern. Uh, the populations are uh, not threatened or endangered, but they are somewhat suspect in some cases. And so we have tried to acquire birds of those species that are useful for breeding and then produce offspring that are healthy and normal and systematically try to release them back into the wild. I would, I would say that the, most Im the, the biggest impact that the program has had, I would think, is probably two areas. One is in meeting the interests and needs of our undergraduate population that increasingly have an interest in uh, non-traditional species other than just our domestic animals or companion animals, but wildlife and exotics and so forth. And uh, they, ha they have really um, uh, become 
very, very involved in what goes on out here. And I think it's been very successful to, uh, in that area in particular. And I think just as a sort of as ambassadors for the university, um, you know, we are involved with thousands and thousands of people every year in these public education programs. Uh, our brightest and best students are going out and talking about identification and natural history, uh, you know, fielding questions uh, as experts. That is, uh, I think, a very, very welcome thing, not just in the Cornell community, but the greater Ithaca, Tompkins County area. So I think in those two areas in particular is probably where we've had our greatest impact. So over the shed? Yep, going right, right over the top of the shed. <laughs> All right, buddy, good luck. <laughs> nope. <laughs> like, almost like he's done that right. before. <laughs>